Today is going to be, uh, I think, somewhere in the curriculum of social implications. I didn't know if it's one, two, three. We always rename this anyway. Um, so it's basically privacy, and it's a project that uh, I've been running, and it's actually in collaboration with Dan Garcia for about three years now, four years. It's getting of age, but the point is that it's as you know current as you can think. Really, it's it's we get new information pretty much every day. There's a mailing list super vivid, and it's like everything. Every time something happens, you know, we're kind of on there. So. Um, since, because of that, um, it's also way easier for me to introduce the topic than uh, other topics because, you know, there are people who do this for a living and in a very entertaining way, much more entertaining than I could do, so let's just listen to them. We actually work on a project that was originally geared towards high school students, that's why the cutesy graphics, um, who, who basically, um, you know, kind of start doing social media and online media, and they should know, you know, what, what will happen to them if they do this, um, and also, you know, basically what the consequences are. So the, the point is that lots of these social media portals have started, you know, using, um, I mean, social media portal critics have started using you know, basically the social angle or the lawmaker angle or different angles. And while this is all important and good, uh, a couple of years ago I said this is all fine, but you have to understand how the internet works actually. Otherwise it's really hard to really think about this stuff. You know, what, what, are the technical back, what is the technical background for all of this? And so we took the technical background and then sort of distilled it into 10 principles. Um, these 10, 10 principles are available at teaching privacy uh, dot org or teachingprivacy.icsi.berkeley.edu. Um, and they are basically 10, as I said before, and we are trying to cover with those 10 sort of the entire space. This is the problem, of course, so it becomes a principle and, and not yet in detail. But basically, if you go on the website, you can see, you can click on each of them, and it goes into way more detail, right? So it's like there's a technical description, there's a summary, there's press articles, there's different things. Um, and I'll also, in this lecture, go through some of them. I don't have the time to go through all of them, but I'll go through some of them. And we also, because ICSI is actually a research institute, we do the experiments. So we actually, I can show you some experimental results that we did about stuff where, uh, you know, we actually showed like, oops, you can cross correlate like, dating sites with YouTube videos, and now you're not anonymous on that dating site anymore, right? And I'll go through this, this is fun, um, maybe also a little bit embarrassing for some people, but this is just basically what it is. Welcome to privacy. So, um, first one is, um, your information footprint is larger than you think. Um, and, you know, this might be a little, if you think about a principle, it's a little judgmental, right? It's larger than you think, right? <laughs> You'd say, why, right? You know, how do you know that? How do you know what I think? But honestly, I've after, usually after looking at the website, they all agree. Um, so here's one example, because the way, the way this works is we have not only videos and, and text to look at, but we also have interactive applications. And one of them is called Ready or Not. So Ready or Not goes through Twitter handles that you give them. For example, Britney Spears in this point, which is actually Britney Spears. And then... You, you could basically see a regular tweet, which in this case is writing and recording all day, every day, right? But then, I don't know, she knew that she was actually giving her geolocation of that recording studio that she's at all day, every day, right now. Um, and if she actually likes that, because I don't know, people might just line up to see her, right? Um, so that was basically a typical example. We also have Stephen Wozniak, which we can track on a daily basis because he's basically posting everything about himself. Um, and, and we had uh, the Mistbusters and a lot of, lot of celebrities, which are easily trackable. And we were like, talk to them too. And it's like, did you know? And some of them said, no, I didn't know, but I don't care. And some of them said, oh, I didn't know, and I'll change that. So it's basically one example of uh, more information than you give out. So most people think that when they tweet, they only give out this information, like, basically exactly that, right? The date and, and a little bit of, uh, of text there. 
The real reality is, though, that you give out the date and a little bit of text on a regular basis, then you know, we know your habits. Like, you're not posting at 3 a.m.? Well, because you're probably sleeping. So I start, we start to get sleep time, right? When do people actually sleep? When do they not? But then also, more importantly, there's meta information in there. So Twitter knows which device you've been using, from which IP it came, and again, they store your geolocation in there if you don't, if you don't say no to it. Um, which browser, you know, all these configuration parameters are in there. In fact, the Twitter message is what, 130 characters? You know this better than me. But the metadata about is, is about 1,000 characters. So <laughs> there's actually way more metadata than just uh, than actual data. Um, so the next thing is, so it's like, okay, so, so now you're like, okay, oops, you know, what, what, what can I do about this? So my information footprint is larger than I think. I have to say, uh, it's still larger than I think, and I've worked in privacy for years now. Um, but the thing is, just think about when you do stuff, um, what this does, right? Inform yourself, like w what is actually posted when you post something. Also, know that connection data is always stored. You go to a website, the website will record that. It's just standard at this point, right? Uh, you enter a store, the store will record that. You do a purchase, this will be very recorded. It's all there you have. In theory, if somebody has information to all of your information trace that you leave, you're completely trackable to the last bit, pretty much, right? Um, in fact, we can track when you go to the bathroom. Why? Because your water usage increases and you have a smart meter that probably will report this back to things. So I can probably, the little flush, you know, this, the peak, I can probably record. So that's how much data is stored about you. It's pretty much everything. Um, so if you want to reduce that, I mean, one thing is to really go see, check your privacy settings regularly and so on and so forth. Um, that's just basically the meta main principle that we have.